My name is Russ Rutledge. I'm, uh, I guess my formal title is the executive director of the Intersource Commons Foundation. Uh, but really, I'm a person who loves Intersource, who loves code, loves people, and loves community. It's my pleasure to be here with all of you. Uh, many of you I know are active not only today in the conference, but in our Slack and in the Intersource Commons Foundation. So it's something that I love and my goal and the goal of the foundation is to uh, give the gift of Intersource to the world. And I just consider myself lucky to be a part of it. Uh, and in my role, I also get to uh, give a little update on the Intersource Commons uh, Foundation and what's happened since our, a little bit about what's happened, I suppose, since our last summit uh, last year in 2024. So you go to the next slide. Uh, if you're new joining us uh, here, let me tell you just a little bit about the Intersource Commons. Uh, the Intersource Commons is an organization was founded, as Yuki said, 10 years ago, uh, 2015. Uh, I remember at that time, 10 years ago, we could uh, we could count on on both our hands I think, the number of companies that were publicly doing Intersource, and we all uh, knew each other. So seeing where things have gone from that day until today is just amazing. I never expected or could have foreseen or imagined the kind of growth and interest that we had. So the Intersource Commons uh, was incorporated as a nonprofit uh, foundation four years ago. It is the central neutral hub in the industry for creating and sharing knowledge on Intersource. We have an online Slack uh, that's continuously active with chat about Intersource, uh, working groups, uh, monthly uh, online calls and talks, as well as this annual summit that we're all participating in now. Uh, going by participation in our events and in our Slack, we see over a thousand unique organizations uh, represented in the Intersource Commons with over 3,000 individuals. It is uh, the largest and the only significant uh, inner source organization and community in the industry. And I think we're all lucky that it exists and that we can be a part of it. Uh, a few things I wanted to highlight uh, here from the last year of the inner source commons. Uh, I am uh, fortunate to be here at a time where things are really on the way up in inner source. Uh, just the, some numbers over the past months on our website. We've seen over 10,000 interactions, uh, clicks that we see in our online metrics, hundreds of thousands of views. Uh, we have Intersource and the Intersource Commons showing up the world over uh, in over 100,000 uh, web searches with top countries having over uh, 10,000 and in the tens of thousands uh, searches each. It's just amazing. The online events that I referenced, this summit, as well as our twice monthly online community calls, we've seen a real growth in the registrations and participations uh, there, over 50% growth. And then all of these monthly talks, as well as the talks here at the summit over the next two days, they'll be put on our YouTube channel where we see a lot and growing interaction uh, or 600 hours of watch time, hundred over a hundred thousand uh, impressions on our YouTube. And it's interesting when you look at the talks there that come about our monthly calls and out of the summits and over the next uh, quarter to half year, the number of views on those, it's comparable to uh, any talk that you'll see at any notable open source conference uh, in the world. So just a ton of engagement. Uh, and Yuki said this earlier, but I want to say it again, because I think it's important to say for my role and to say for the people who are still joining to recognize our sponsors. Um, I want to say a few things that have been unique about this group of sponsors as a group and also individually in my interaction with them as executive director. Uh, first of all, I'm humbled and, and thankful and amazed that all of these sponsors have committed uh, committed verbally to continue to sponsor the Intersource Commons in the upcoming year, uh, which is something uh, that uh, many times is just unheard of to have that 100% uh, continuation. I don't think it's anything uh, you know, special from uh, from myself, but just a recognition uh, that of the importance of intersource. Uh, times 
uh, are are lean for a lot of us in the tech industry. Times are are difficult, and I think Intersource has a special place in helping us all that we uh, to be the best. Uh, that we can be as we collaborate together. And I think this continued sponsorship is recognition of that from some very notable names of the industry. Besides the actual sponsorship of the Intersource Commons, uh, I won't be able to go into detail here, but I can say that I've personally met our sponsoring people who are advocating for Intersource at all of these organizations. And as I was preparing this slide and going down the list, I can point to something notable unique and above and beyond that every one of these has done for Intersource, whether in the industry, within their company, or in the Intersource comments, something above and beyond what was expected or even thought of. Uh, so it's something that I'm grateful for. I'm fortunate uh, to work in the Intersource comments, and we're fortunate to have the support of all of these. Uh, one call out I want to make from one of our sponsors, uh, Shell, is an exciting new project that was just made public last week. Project Fleming is an open source project designed to enable and support Intersource within an organization. It's completely open source. I have the link here on the slide. I'll put it in the chat uh, after when I'm done speaking. Uh, what it is, is it's a search and discovery tool for Intersource code and information within your organization. It uses the latest uh, open source AI models for natural search and discovery of intersource opportunities within an organization. Now, the Fleming uh, comes from Sir Alexander Fleming, who's pictured there, who is a discoverer of penicillin, the modern antibiotic that's completely revolutionized the way that all of us interact with communicable diseases. And this discovery of penicillin was a happy accident uh, Fleming was doing development uh, on an experiment in his lab. And what happened was, was that by accident, from the development lab next door, there was some material that cross-contaminated through the air and contaminated into one of his uh, Petri dishes and experiments there. He noticed that the mold that had come over did a fantastic job of destroying the bacteria that he was studying. And based off of that happy accident and further investigations, it led to the modern discovery of penicillin. Uh, so it was this cross-contamination, this blending of development from adjacent areas in his organization that resulted in something uh, unexpected and amazing. And it's these type of happy accidents uh, that many of us have seen uh, as a benefit of intersource collaboration, where ideas and code are shared across organizational uh, boundaries, and Project Fleming uh, aims to enable that. Um, in an exciting announcement, Shell has indicated their intent to work with the Intersource Commons Foundation to donate the code for this project to the foundation, which would be the first of its kind for the Intersource Commons Foundation uh, code project. Uh, designed to enable uh, Intersource uh, in any organization that wants to use it. So it's very exciting. As I think about Intersource across the world in 2024, one development that I want to highlight is the rise of local Intersource groups and in-person gatherings. These are language-based, region-based, uh, online and in-person groups and meetups dedicated to supporting Intersource in that language area or region. Uh, first of all, in uh, Japan, we saw not one, but two Intersource gatherings uh, in, in the fall. Here's a picture from the Intersource gathering in, the, uh, in August uh, that had about 80 people attending. And it was also at this gathering that we saw the emergence of an inner source superhero that the uh, Japan community created, uh, uh, a mascot, inner source man. Uh, I just love seeing this uh, mascot and the idea that inner source is a superpower. Uh, you can see the, the eyes of inner source man uh, are uh, cartoon versions of the inner source logo. So inner source. Uh, man and Intersource is a superhero helping all developers to break out of organizational silos. Next, we move over to China, where there is an in-person gathering in Shenzhen in September with dozens there in person and over 10,000 uh, watching 
uh, online as the gathering was part of a larger uh, open source community. This event, when counting all the online attendees, was probably the largest time in the history of the world where the most number of people have been focused on one thing about inner source at the same time. That's a notable achievement for our China-based inner sorcerers. In addition, uh, in Europe, there were small uh, inner source in-person gatherings, uh, which I was able to attend a few of these in Berlin. Uh, in Vienna and Austria and Dublin and Ireland. In addition, there are two additional in-person gatherings planned around InnerSource. One later uh, this year in December in Paris associated with the Open Source Experience Conference. And then back to Berlin, I can't redraw the flag, but Berlin has a second event associated with Voss Backstage uh, in the spring, an InnerSource gathering. These next ones, there's no official plan or date, but I've heard rumblings of desire for in-person intersource gatherings uh, in Austin, in the United States, in Texas, uh, also in Brazil. And I'm very pleased and excited that uh, the Africa community has recently organized its online operations and goals. So there's a, an Africa intersource group. And we expect that these will become deeper and broader in the upcoming year. So very exciting development over the last year. Well, this summit that we're in right now, this is our chance to gather as a global inner source community. Uh, these summits uh, before COVID took place in person. There are actually two every year. That's uh, before COVID. That's how we got to 16 that Yuki mentioned in only 10 years. We did two for a year two per year for the first number of years. Now, since COVID, uh, we've all been online just like we are now today. Uh, as we contemplated, uh, uh, not only today, but the upcoming year of InnerSource, uh, I want us to enjoy today, uh, enjoy tomorrow, enjoy these, uh, these online talks. I'm also announcing today that next year in 2025, we intend to bring the InnerSource Summit, the annual InnerSource Summit, back in person in celebration of 10 years of the InnerSource Commons. For the location, we're looking for organizations to apply to serve as the host location for the InnerSource Summit. This is what happened before COVID. Organizations would uh, sponsor and host the InnerSource Summit at their uh, particular organization uh, building or location. So if this is something that's interesting to you, there's an application form where you can apply to host InnerSource Summit 2025. Again, I'll also put this link in the chat so you can have it. Uh, hosting InnerSource Summit 2025, we're targeting the fall time again, You know, this time uh, again next year or possibly a little earlier, uh, sometime in the fall. Uh, hosting InnerSource Summit 2025 is a great way for your organization to support the InnerSource Commons and the spread of InnerSource in the industry. It's a way to put your organization name out as a leader in InnerSource. And also it's a great way to bring training for InnerSource uh, close to and easy to attend for uh, any of your engineers and employees that are at the location uh, that can serve as the host for InnerSource Summit 2025. The application form will be open through the end of February for next year. So you have time to do the workings internally to uh, plan to apply to host InnerSource Summit 2025. And I'll put the link in the chat. Well, now I want to welcome everyone again for those that are uh, just arriving. Welcome everyone again to InnerSource Summit 2024. There's a great uh, two days of talks and teaching uh, from the most expert inner sorcerers in the world. I know I'm looking forward to attending all that I can uh, live and also going and watching all the recordings of the tracks that I'm not able to make it to today. All right. Welcome to Inner Source Summit 2024. Thank you. Uh, it's wonderful to be 